Welcome to my fifth annual shop tour. As a lot of you know, I work out of a three car garage. Now I only use one of those car ports for my shop. So that's about a third of the garage. If you guys want the tour, stay tuned and I'll take you on inside. To get started, this is my Harbor Freight dual stage dust collector. I modified it from a single stage to a dual and that allows me to get better suction. Now what I do is I hook this up to a remote control so I just have to turn it on and off when I'm at any one of my power tools and it automatically has dust collection going to it then. So it's really super handy and nice and it's definitely a great addition that I added to my shop this year. Just above my dust collection system, I have my clamp rack. This stores all the major clamps in my workshop. The only ones it doesn't really store are some of my spring clamps because I just have too many. And then it also doesn't store my pipe clamps just because those are way too long to fit on here. Next to it, I recently made this saw blade shop clock and that's just hanging out over here. It doesn't really do anything, but I like the character that it adds to the shop. And right next to my shop clock and my dust collection system, I have my miter saw station and this is by far my favorite workbench in my workshop right now and here's a few reasons why. If you remember, I recently added these paper rolls that cover up the top of your workbench when you're using them, if you're doing like paintings or glue ups, and it does a great job of protecting the top of my workbench. Underneath here, it looks brand new, and I don't have to worry about damaging it when I'm using it. On my past workbenches, I never had these, and I just damaged the top right away. It makes the workbench look really old and nasty looking, so this definitely helps preserve it, and I, I, I gotta say that I love it so far, and it's definitely Definitely one of my uh, most favorite additions I've ever made to a workbench. The second reason I love this workbench is because it has these doors on it, which do a great job of keeping loose sawdust from falling on the stuff that I store underneath it. Now typically I never had doors on my workbenches and all my stuff would get caked up and coated with sawdust and it just got really nasty and I was always cleaning it. But now with these doors, it does a great job of keeping it out and I don't have to worry about cleaning as much. Now as for what's actually being stored inside here, on this first shelf here I have a lot of my safety stuff like glasses and respirators stored in the back. And I also have a lot of my marking tools like a lot of pencils underneath here. That's just really handy to have laying around. Then I have some tape measures and a speed triangle and stuff like that. On my second shelf I have a lot of my drilling and drive stuff. I have a ton of pre-drill bits right here. And then back in the further back I have also a lot of drill bits different shapes and sizes for different applications. And then next to all this stuff, I have some of my Forstner bits and just hole saws and whatnot in the back there. On this bottom shelf here, I have this uh, wood burning book. It's pretty empty down here, but I also have some wood burners way down in the back there as well as some spray adhesive. It's just kind of uh, organized chaos on the bottom shelf here. On the other side here, I have my sanders on my first shelf with a lot of sandpaper. It's always nice to have extra sandpaper. You can never have too much of it. And then next to it, I have a few uh, random clamps just that you can't really put on my clamp rack, so I just store them inside here because there's some extra space on that shelf. On the middle shelf, I have my nail guns, and then I also have a lot of extra nails to go inside of them, so I don't ever have to worry about being out. Next to that, I just have some open space, so I threw my shop apron here. It's just another area where I don't have to worry about sawdust getting on it if I had it stored um, outside of these cabinets. And then underneath here, I have some of my handheld power tools, like a circular saw, a jigsaw, and then in the back, I have a Dremel, and I also have my correct pocket hole jig stored way back there in the case. That just, uh, I just kind of find open spots and put all my tools wherever I can. Just above my miter saw is where I keep my finishing supplies. This shelf I made a few years back. It's pretty simple to make and it does a great job of storing all my stuff. I still need to bring out all of the stuff from my basement because I kept everything stored down there during the winter and I've just yet to pull it back out so far. So that's why it looks a little bit empty right at the moment. In the second cabinet, I have the same setup. On this first shelf here though, I have a lot of uh, just different jigs that companies have sent me. A lot of these are Rockler stuff, so I have all the stuff that they sent me like these 90 degree corner clamps. Those are extremely handy to have and I gotta say, when I'm building like a bookshelf or a cabinet or something like that, it's just, uh, it's really something handy. It's kind of like, I'm not sure how I used to hold it before that, so it's just something nice to have. Underneath here I have more Rockler stuff as well as some of the things that Micro Jigs sent me like the gripper and all that good stuff. 
And then on this bottom shelf down here, I have a lot of my dowel stuff, as well as some of my screws and nails, and then just some random like stencils and whatnot, as well as some zip ties and uh, a little bit of wood glue. So this, this cabinet is kind of more organized chaos than the other side. And then let's go ahead and take a look inside this door. So inside here on the first shelf, I have some of my metalworking stuff, like a grinder in the back, and then some threaded rods and different pieces of metal and whatnot. And then next to that, I have some of my go-kart parts. On the second shelf here, I have just a lot of small stuff stored in this carousel thing. It does a nice job of holding a lot of different things, and I can easily access it by turning it around and whatnot, so that's really handy to have. Next to it, I have some of my electrical stuff that I really don't use that much, but it just, it needs an area to be stored that won't get sawdust on it all the time, so there's kind of a good spot for it. I have a heat gun way back there, and then I just, in the back, I have like a bunch of those little wood plugs and things like that. Underneath it here, I have some of my screwdrivers in my toolbox that I made, and then next to it, I have my wooden mallet that I also made. And I have a regular mallet and a few hammers and whatnot, and that's pretty much all the stuff that's inside of this cabinet. On top of this cabinet, I have this organizer that holds a lot of my like screws and stuff. It does a great job of it. I, uh, I have a lot of like super small screws in here. I used to throw them all in a bucket and they're all just a gigantic mess. So this does a nice job of keeping everything organized and I can just, when I need like quarter inch bolts, I just come right here and I can find some. If I need uh, larger ones, I can just check underneath. And uh, I definitely would recommend everybody to have one of these in their shop because we all have those miscellaneous parts that we need to keep somewhat organized instead of just in a gigantic bucket. And when you go to use it, you're not digging through it, you can just find it super easy by pulling it out. Next to my large organizer, I have a smaller one. This one does a good job of holding things like my center punch, and then also these tweezers that they sent me. This is all sent by Rockler right here. One thing I like about the center punch is it's spring loaded, so instead of using a hammer and tapping it in to make a mark, it's just real quick, line it up, then pull up and snap, and it works out really well. So it's kind of one of those tools where it's super simple, but it's great to have in your workshop. Next to my miter saw station, I have my homemade router table, and this has worked out really well so far. I just don't use it that much. I thought I would use one if I made it bigger, but I, apparently I still don't use it that much. It does work when I need it to, and then right underneath I have this cabinet that stores all my router bits and stuff like that. So it's nice that I have that all in one area, so if I need a router bit, I don't, I don't have to like go through those cabinets. I can just drop right down underneath here and get whatever I need out of it. You might also notice that next to it I have some of my smaller scraps of plywood. This is because I really don't have a good area to store large sheets of plywood. And I also don't really store them that much because once I buy them, I end up cutting them up right away and using it for a project. It's just something that I don't store or keep around a lot. Once I get them in the shop, I'm usually pretty quick to cut them up. Next to my router table is my drill press. This is another one of those tools that I don't use that much, but when I do need it, it's nice and handy to have laying around. I still need to figure out a better way to connect my, uh, my dust collection to it. There's not really like a good way. I guess I could clamp it somehow, but I don't know. I would like to figure out a better way of doing that. If anybody has any ideas, I'd be glad to hear them in the comments below. Next to my drill press, I have my lathe. And once again, this is another one of those tools that I don't use that much, but when I do need it, it's nice and handy to have. Now this isn't the best lathe, I've mentioned it in the past. It's a Harbor Freight one, it doesn't work that well, and I had a lot of people ask me if I would recommend this. And I have to say honestly, no I wouldn't, because it's really underpowered, it's junky, the tool rests on it broke, I was lucky enough to have somebody make me a new one. But um, I definitely would not recommend this lathe. I'd say save up your money and buy one that's a little bit more expensive, but it's gonna work a lot longer and a lot better in the long run. Now behind my lathe, I have a dust hood that's set up to collect the dust coming off my lathe. I've yet to actually try it out because I haven't used my lathe in so long, but it's definitely something that I would like to get back into and try to make a few turning projects every now and then. And then back over here to the right, I have some of my drills and the chargers for them. This is just because this area is out of the way. I can store my drills here and uh, when I need them, I can just go ahead and take them out. Half the time they're not here though because I'm always using them for different projects. Underneath my lathe workbench, I have some of my tools for my lathe. I've yet to actually use these because that's just how much I never use my lathe. And 
I've actually had these for a few years. I'd like to give them a shot, but it's just something I've never, never gotten around to using, I guess. Next to it, I have a, a mask, so if you're turning something and you're worried about it coming off, you can have this nice face shield. Then I have a set of calipers right here. This is uh, basically, I bought this for when I was gonna turn a wooden baseball bat, but I was in the middle of that project and it broke, and I never ended up sharing that video with you guys. So I would definitely like to try again turning a baseball bat. Uh, maybe I'll save that for next year or I'll save it for like the playoffs or something. Next to my lathe tools, I have a lot of my table saw accessories. I have a dado stack right here, some push sticks. And then I have the original uh, table saw guard. I have some inserts and then I also made this tapering jig fairly easily. I never made a project for that. It's just something that I needed during a project, so I just whipped it up real quick. Um, if you guys are interested in a project for that, just let me know in the comments, and I can probably make a new one, maybe a little bit better, because that's a pretty simple design, but you can't beat it, because it works so well. And last but not least, I have this um, miter saw sled, I guess you could call it. It slides in the table saw track, and it gives you supposedly perfectly 45 degree cuts to make a perfect 90. Um, I think I've yet to try that, but that's another thing that Rockler sent me. They sent me so many things that I just, I haven't got around to using all of them. I kind of feel bad about it, but I am super thankful that they sent me all that stuff. So thanks to Rockler again for all the cool stuff that they sent me. So coming off the back wall where the lathe is and some of my table saw accessories, I have my actual table saw. This is a Delta table saw. I picked it up from Lowe's for about $600 at the time. I was comparing between this one and the rigid one at Home Depot and I think I went with this one because I like the name brand Delta. I know that rigid has a lifetime warranty but I know that Delta is a pretty trusted woodworking tool and I also like the fence design on this a little better. I think that's the main reason why I went with it because the fence just seemed like it was a little bit more sturdy. Now if I was doing it again, I might go with the rigid since they do have the lifetime warranty, but I can't say I have any complaints about this saw. It's been working great so far and for all the people that are wondering if I would recommend it, I would definitely recommend it. Only thing is I noticed that I need to clean this table off here and uh, if you guys want a video on how to do that, I'd be willing to make a short one on that as maybe like a little bonus video or something. So if you're interested in that, let me know in the comments below as well. Right next to my table saw, I have this four foot by four foot workbench. This has been a great workbench. It's mounted on caster wheels, so I can move it around anywhere in the shop that I need to. It's really handy having stuff on wheels because then it's not always stuck in one location and when you go to rearrange your shop, you just push it around or push it out of the way, no problem. Now I also made this table the same height as my table saw so that I can double it as an outfeed table. I would definitely recommend doing that if you're gonna make one of these because it's just nice and handy. That way when you're dealing with a big sheet of plywood, you can just slide it right along here and you don't need anybody's help cutting it up. Now taking a quick look underneath, this is where I store my pipe clamps since they're so long. I don't really have anywhere else to put them so I just put them right here. And I have some of the clamps that Rockler sent me here. And then you can also see a piece of the hose that goes into my table saw for my dust collection system. So I have the dust collection system going into all my major power tools. Now on the other side I have a toolbox that stores a lot of my uh, automotive tools like wrenches and sockets, different things like that. I don't have a whole lot so they fit in this box nice and neat. Next to that I have my scroll saw and then next to my scroll saw I have some wood glue as well as this bench top grinder. And then in here it's just the empty Ryobi bag with a lot of the drill cases and all that. Since I never use those, I'm never putting them in a bag, I always have them out and readily available. On top of my workbench, it's empty except for this vise in the corner. This is just bolted right on. Now I know this is more of a metal type vise, but I mean, I use it for some of the woodworking things I have. I just put blocks of wood in there and kind of protect it, but all in all, I got it for such a cheap discount in price, I couldn't pass it up and it really takes care of all the needs that I need with it. If I really need something bigger, I can just clamp it directly to my workbench. Next to this workbench, I have my Craftsman 12 inch bandsaw. I was fortunate enough to have this given to me from my neighbor over here, their grandpa had it and uh, he didn't need it anymore so I was able to get the ownership of it. But uh, it's a little bit rough running right now. I need to do a few things to tweak it. I've had it for a few years now and I just, I have never really sat down and took the time to tweak it and get it running in tip top shape. So if you guys possibly wanna see a video on that, 
leave it in the comments and I'll try to get to that video um, pretty soon in the future here as well. Underneath my bandsaw is where I store my planer. This was given to me by another neighbor of mine. The only thing with this is it also runs a hair bit rough so it could probably use a tune up. I do have some new blades that I could put on it and that would probably help it out a lot but I do need to make a few tweaks to, to this to get it running in tip top shape once again. And last but not least, I have my welding card with my welder. I would like to use this welder a lot more, and I know I say this probably in each shop tour that I do, but I really do want to get using this a little bit more. I'm thinking about possibly making an off-road metal go-kart if I can get all the planets to align right. I uh, could possibly make that happen. So if you guys are interested in a video like that, definitely let me know and I'll try to hook something up maybe with the company to help kind of sponsor me and give me some of the parts so it's a little bit more affordable to make. So that wraps up the fifth annual shop tour. If you guys like this video, as always, give it a big thumbs up. I do apologize for not having any videos the past two weeks. I had a few things pop up where I just, I wasn't able to get the videos out in time and whatnot. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. As always, hit that subscribe button for more woodworking videos almost every Tuesday. I'll see you guys next week.